I think you're going to see the Republican side be a lot more wide open, in part because they have uh, a lot of young guns thinking that they're going to be, you know, the next president. Pretty sure they're going to be the next president. Um, and so, and then I think on the Democratic side, obviously people are waiting to see if uh, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton runs. And I think if she doesn't run, then the list of potential people, I think, expands quite a bit, including Biden, potentially, um, including Martin O'Malley from Maryland. From, uh, you've got Governor Cuomo. You've got Kirsten Gillibrand. So, um, but I think the dynamics are a little lopsided because on the Republican side, I also think if you look at the range of people who are con considering it and who you would consider as a serious contender, it is a very broad range within the Republican Party. And so I think one of the challenges that their party is going to have in 2016, all of this um, kind of infighting that we've seen in the last couple of years is really going to come to a head in 2016 because they're going to have to find a way to all come together and elect one person. I think the one of the most fascinating stories about 2016 is going to be the emerging Republican field. I think it's going to be one of the biggest fields we've seen in decades because you don't have a major party leader right now. There's no presumptive nominee. So anyone and everyone is going to at least give it a look. And I'm talking everyone from Mike Pence, the governor of Indiana, Scott Walker, governor of Wisconsin, members of the Senate. Maybe John Thune takes a look at it like just like he did in 2012. And uh, I think you're just going to see so many candidates see an open field and see an opportunity. Because that's one of the things in Washington, the joke is among reporters on Capitol Hill, every single politician every day wakes up and looks in the mirror and sees a future president. And I think a lot of them are going to perhaps pull the trigger, at least with an exploratory committee, early on in, let's say, 2015. I think Republicans right now are grappling with how the shutdown is going to impact 2014. You see a lot of nervous Republicans on Capitol Hill, especially in the House, if they come from center-right districts or purple districts, and they're not going home and getting cheered like a lot of members from the Tea Party, uh, more Tea Party districts are getting. They're, they're getting some skepticism. They're getting some criticism back home. Because of the way the districts were drawn in 2010, almost gerrymandered, I don't think Republicans' majority is in too much trouble. But if they start messing around again in January with another CR fight or in February with another debt ceiling fight, they could be in trouble. But I think there's a reluctance right now within the GOP to go through this again. I sat down with Mitch McConnell last week. He doesn't want to do another shutdown because they know the closer you get to November 2014 and the more standoffs you have, the, the farther you'll drop in the polls. And we saw that with 74 percent of Americans uh, pretty unhappy with Republicans during the shutdown. Republicans, as much as they like getting rah, rah cheers from the right, they're, uh, they don't like those poll numbers at all. It could have consequences for 2014. You know, I was at the Democratic National Committee during the 2005-2006 cycle. A year out when you see numbers like this for the Republican Party, it certainly looks promising. And the shutdown actually helped the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee with their recruiting. So they were able to recruit some great candidates in some races where they didn't have candidates before the shutdown happened. The challenge, though, will be, I mean, a year is a lifetime in politics. So the challenge will be, can Democrats create a message out of this, right, that, that they can then run on as Democrats and use against Republicans? My recommendation to them <laughs> would be um, an issue of competence and an issue of this is what happens when you let them run the government. They're going to put ideology over uh, the country. If they can effectively make that argument and continue to stay on that message consistently, then it may have an impact. Otherwise, you know, it, like I say, a year is a lifetime. <laughs> you know, he, Senator Cruz is kind of doing his own thing. It's very clear. I mean, he, you know, I, you've never seen a situation before where a freshman senator was controlling a major part of the Republican House Party Caucus. I mean, they were checking in with him before they met with Speaker Boehner and getting their marching orders. So he clearly is, I think he's trying to galvanize that sort of Sarah Palin Tea Party wing of the party so that he has kind of his own sort of power base within. Within that, he also has obviously a lot of backing from Heritage and a number of conservative groups. So what he clearly means by that is, you know, we will come after you if we have to. And, and if you notice, I mean, he's been, he hasn't really said if he would support um, John Cornyn, the senior senator from Texas. That was very surprising. He hasn't said if he would support uh, Mitch McConnell. Also surprising because in both cases, both men, McConnell actually has a Tea Party challenger, and there's a question about what's going to happen with Cornyn. So 
clearly uh, Ted Cruz aims to play big uh, and try to expand that power base uh, in the, pro in the t 2014. I think Senator Cruz, even though he's a member of the National Republican Senatorial Committee, he's made a lot of suggestions, included in a recent interview with National Review, that if you oppose his strategy when it comes to Obamacare, you could risk a primary challenge. And you've seen major Tea Party favorites like Sarah Palin hint that they could get involved in a race like Mitch McConnell's re-election in Kentucky, and, and someone like Matt Bevin, the Tea Party challenger against McConnell, he could start gathering steam in 2014 because there's a real civil war right now in the Republican Party over tactics. It's, when you look at the policy and you look at the platform of these politicians, they're almost identical, McConnell and Cruz. When it comes to politics, they, they, they echo each other, they're the same. But when it comes to their outlook on strategy, that's where the real fissure occurs, that's where the battle is right now. How to approach Obamacare, how to approach the president in divided government. And conservatives right now are trying to think about what are their expectations in divided government? What's achievable, what's not? Ted Cruz thinks a lot's achievable. He's gonna keep fighting for that. Mitch McConnell and others are saying hold back, be more strategic and targeted with your approaches to the administration.